Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, I want to begin by associating myself with the comments of uh, Ranking Member Granger and Ranking Member uh, Calvert uh, in terms of their concerns. I think uh, Representative Calvert put it pretty well when he said, look, the outline of the deal here is pretty obvious. The defense number has got to go up. The domestic number has got to come down to some degree. Orphan bill has got to go out. Hyde has to go back in. And I think we all uh, know that. And I want to commend the chairwoman of the full committee uh, because nobody's worked harder to try and get everybody around the table than our chairwoman. Uh, and nobody's been more aggressive about trying to be tough on date lines than our chairwoman, you know, trying to restrict the time, trying to make sure that we got this done in a timely fashion so that the and the folks at the Pentagon and every other agency of government could plan and use the, the resources we give them wisely. So um, I've got very little criticism for this subcommittee, none for the subcommittee, frankly, very little for our, our full committee. I will say this as a suggestion before I get to my, my question. This well may be beyond us, Madam Chair. We may need, number one, the leadership of both parties to sit down and get engaged with both the House and the Senate. I know they've got a lot of different responsibilities, but I think their big one is funding the government. And I would say the same thing with all due respect, and I mean this respectfully for the president, the administration. Uh, the president uh, has been a pretty busy guy. He got some things done, uh, you know, the COVID relief bill, uh, infrastructure bill. He's working on things now. He's not having as much success on, you know, changing the filibuster, voting legislation, build back better bill. Maybe he needs to focus on funding the government that he heads. Uh, and uh, maybe we need a White House uh, convention here because we're not going to get some of these decisions transcend this committee. This subcommittee has very little to do with Hyde, uh, you know, but Hyde certainly is going to impact our ability to get our job done. So we're going to have to get some people above our level engaged in, in the process. And the president, at the end of the day, is the commander in chief, is responsible for the military. Uh, and we need some focus here, uh, not on some of these other agendas that frankly are stalling out right now. Now, in terms of this specific hearing, let me ask a couple of questions. I want to go first to uh, General Brown, if I may. I'm fortunate enough to have Tinker Air Force Base in my district, and I know how important logistics are and just the maintenance of what you have. So I would like to ask you what a CR would do. Number one, we're expanding capabilities down there for the KC-46 and for other potential missions looking ahead that we might pick up. Uh, and then uh, number two, just the day-to-day -day maintenance of uh, what's frankly an aging air fleet, uh, you know, what will the CR do in terms of your ability to take care of those kinds of problems? Uh, thank you, Representative Colt. And, and, you know, specifically, I mean, very broadly, the, uh, the CR will have a number of challenges for a number of our depots and, and really our weapon system sustainment uh, accounts, which will be impacted. When you think of really about Tinker, one of the things, when I had a chance to visit there was the uh, site for the uh, KC-46 uh, uh, aspects for the depot. That it will be one of those that would not get done if we had a long year-long CR, and that would get delayed, and which would impact our uh, being able to sustain that particular platform. I think the other aspect, when you look at WSS and our depots, um, when, when you have this aging fleet that, that we do have, it does also impact the workforce. And if you don't have the funding there to uh, balance that workforce to actually go against the uh, the, the uh, platforms that we're, we're trying to work through. In addition to the parts and the spares and the supply chain, all those things kind of come together that have an impact. And then uh, the the other part of it, uh, CR also offered the the investment, not only uh, in, with the Air Force, but also with our industry partners and the small businesses and uh, vendors that can help support us. Uh, they, uh, they don't have a predictable funding flow. And so you don't bring on the workforce, you don't bring on the parts, and it just slows everything down for us. It'll have a huge impact on our readiness across the Air Force. And then a lot of that we end up doing on the backs of our airmen. And uh, we don't want that. And then, then it becomes a retention issue. So it just there's compounding uh, impacts with, with the year long CR. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Madam Chair, I may be out of time. If not, I've got a quick question for uh, um, for General Martin, which he partly covered earlier, but I seconds. also... Go for it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm also privileged to have uh, Fort Sill in my district and a couple of the modernization missions that have been laid out by the Army are, are based there. And uh, General Martin, uh, from a modernization standpoint, I know we are in a very serious contest with near-peer adversaries. What would uh, a CR do in, in terms of setting back your efforts to have the force ready to deal with 
uh, God forbid, uh, you know, the kinds of uh, uh, adversaries that have, we haven't fought in a long time, that have armor, that have air forces, that have comparable technical capabilities to uh, what the United States military has. Congressman, it's good seeing you again, and uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I'll just, I'll try to put this uh, as, as, as simply as I could. You know, our chief of staff of the Army, General McConville, has stated previously that uh, we've got 24 of our 31 plus 4 signature programs are going to be in some form or fashion in the hands of soldiers, whether it's in an operational testing environment, a soldier touch point, or actually feeling it. 24 of those programs will be out there by 20. 23. Well, without the funding that would be associated with the restraints of the CR, 19 of those 24 programs will be impacted. The timing of those programs will be impacted. So that's a huge impact. And once again, as my colleagues have all said so aptly, uh, you can't get back time, but it's also the resources that we could have spent this year, we're going to have to spend next year, which means it's twice the cost. And so uh, it's a huge impact on our modernization and uh, maintaining our ability to compete in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair.